Yeah, it's a big one. Jordan and Muffet as number one in unbeaten South Carolina. Dawn Staley bringing her Gamecocks into Duke along with Aaliyah Boston. Right now the best player in the country. Celeste Taylor, one of seven transfers. A lot of new faces for Duke also coming in unbeaten. Good crowd on hand tonight as South Carolina and Duke battle it out. Someone will be suffering their first loss of the season. So glad you could be with us, Pam Ward, along with Stephanie White, who won the Wade Trophy. Andrea Carter will be joining us shortly. Okay, so South Carolina has plowed through everybody. What will Duke have to do tonight to have a chance? Well, it sounds obvious, but they got to make shots. There are not going to be a lot of interior scoring opportunities or second chance opportunities with the length and size of South Carolina. And Duke has to make threes. They've done it to this point in the season, 68, which is a new program record through eight games. They're going to have to find the bottom of the net. And for South Carolina, I'm telling you, all eyes continue to be on Aaliyah Boston. She's the best player in the country. You mentioned it. She's taken it to another level these last five games, averaging 20 points a ball game. Look at that, shooting 67% from the field, 13.2 rebounds, almost four blocks a game. She's in better shape. She's continued to add to her game. She's been dominant. And one thing that South Carolina is missing is starting point guard Destiny Henderson missing the last couple of games with a hurt leg. For an update, let's go down to Drea Carter. Pam, I was told by South Carolina that Destiny Henderson is not starting tonight, but whether or not she will play was not disclosed. Head coach Don Staley said against Maryland in their last game, she felt like they had to survive without Destiny Henderson. She said we had too many turnovers and Maryland slowed the game down. So the emphasis tonight is to take care of the basketball and play with pace. Will they need or use Destiny Henderson to do so? We'll have to wait and see. They have a big game coming up next when they take on Stanford. Already South Carolina has played and beaten four top 10 teams, including Connecticut and Maryland most recently. And we are underway. Duke wearing the white trimmed in blue. Vanessa DeJesus, the only returning starter for this team, runs the point. Well, right away, one thing important that's important for Duke is the ball movement and player movement. The ball can't get stuck. And there they go with the three to start it. Exactly what you said they needed to do this evening. And you look at the South Carolina starting five. Leticia Ami here has been running the point. Number 15, there she is. A lot of length. There's backup point guard Raven Johnson, a freshman, also is out for the season with a bad left knee. So they are down to Ami here running the point. She will share that with Saya Cook. Les Taylor, the transfer from Texas, frees herself of Beal momentarily and then missed the shot. How will they guard Boston? And me here for three, knocks it down so much in her arsenal. I mean, this is a player who, who came into South Carolina, had such great upside promise, has honed her skill set. Her versatility, Dawn Staley loves her fearlessness. But look at her being able to knock down that three-point shot, extending the range. And she's 6'4", and in warm-ups today, we saw her almost dunk the ball a few times, and here she is bringing it up. Part of that versatility. And Pam, 6'4", with a 6'10", wingspan. It's, it's a matchup nightmare, really. And you see Dukes playing this 2-3 zone. They're going to continue to try to limit the paint touch opportunities and force, force South Carolina to knock down threes. Yeah, Meher thought about it. Now they go into Boston, but it's picked off by Taylor. Another outside shot by DeJesus this time, and a good play by Balagoon to force the turnover, took it away from Boston, who eventually comes up with the basketball. Oh, and you see the length on display right there. Nothing easy in, from an interior standpoint. Yeah, Duke definitely had at a size disadvantage. Jade Williams at 6'5", the tallest player out there. You see Taylor fronting Boston. Well, we're going to see Duke, when they're in this 2-3 zone, use those top two defenders in the 2-3 to come down on the post, to switch on on-ball screens. They're going to have to cover a lot of ground. And Cook 
Uh, pardon me, Boston just getting enveloped. Still trying to get her first look inside. She does have some diversity to her game now offensively. It's me here can't save it. Taylor picks it up. Swing it around. Lexi Gordon, who has played both at UConn and Texas Tech with the miss. Mike Jade Williams also had has gotten her graduate, or is in graduate school, Boston. Now that's just nasty when someone with her ability can start hitting threes. It is, and it shows the growth of her game. You know, she, not just the ability to hit a 15-foot jump shot, but now three-point range. You have to guard her everywhere on the floor. Has gotten herself into, into terrific shape during the offseason. That has helped, certainly. Taylor guarded by Cook. And double dribbles. This is a South Carolina team known for its defense and for Aaliyah Boston. Well, every year Aaliyah Boston has added something to her game, and she is stepping up and knocking down the three with confidence. Look, it's tough when you're a big. It's physical inside. You have to battle every single day. She's gotten herself in great shape. She's diversified her game. Now she stretches the floor. She's got the ability to take it off the bounce. And Dawn Staley talked about just her growth and development, and she's a worker. She wants it. Boston gets another one. Let's go to Drea. Well, Stephanie, I'm just thinking that if Aaliyah Boston can step out and knock down that top of the key three-pointer, it's also going to open up the high-low pass down low because the defense is going to have to extend and guard her. She might not need to hit as many threes if she's scoring down low, though. Oh, no question. And, and when you have the ability to stretch the defense and you've hit one already, everybody is aware. Everybody is aware, and Andre is absolutely right. That's going to open up interior opportunities. Yeah, it's scary. You have to guard her all over the floor now, and the offensive putback by Saxton. It's a 10-0 South Carolina run. After Duke took the early lead. Stuck on that three by Balagoon to open things up. Now inside, Boston blocks. Yeah, I think Celeste Taylor needs one more dribble to engage Boston. Get her another step. Well, South Carolina scoring 10 straight points over Duke. Well, Carol Lawson, since she has come into Durham, starting to turn things around. We'll have more on that when we come back. Carol Lawson is in her second season in charge of Duke. This team 8-0 for the first time since the 2013-14 season, and 11 straight non-conference wins. It's been over 10 years since they have done that. And at number 15, highest ranking in almost four years. By far their toughest test tonight. They did have an impressive win over Iowa earlier this season. They did, and you know it's a mentality. It's an expectation. Kara Lawson comes into a program and, and expects her teams to compete at a high level, to play with pace and space. And, and these players, seven new players that have transferred in, want to play that way as well. And the expectation level is to go out to win every night. Yeah, you know, Pam and Steph, I think it was really telling on what it means to play for Kara Lawson when we talked to Lexi Gordon and Celeste Taylor. Both of them said Duke wasn't really on their radar coming out of high school, but when they wanted to transfer, playing for Kara Lawson here was a big deal, and that was the selling point for them both. Well, look, Kara Lawson's a player who's played at the highest level. Um, she, she's coached in the NBA. You know, she, she's, she's worked on our side. I mean, she's seen the game from every, every angle at the highest level. And players who want to be coached and players who want to be great want to come here and play for her. And also was the three-on-three -three Olympic coach, USA winning that in Tokyo. First time it was part of the competition. Boston very patiently got the shot off. Victoria Saxton. And that's what Aaliyah Boston does, right? She's double teamed, she uses her pivots, she stays poised, and because she brings two defenders, it opens up offensive rebound opportunities, and Victoria Saxon's one of the best in the country at crashing the glass. Absolutely, and South Carolina, one of the best in the country. Their rebounding margin, plus 19 overall. Especially dangerous on the offensive glass that was thrown towards the Geico sign. <laughs> Not playing tonight. But well, the activity level of Victoria Saxton. You see Aaliyah Boston draws two. That means somebody's running loose. It can't be Saxton if you're Duke. You have to find her on that high post dive. 
Saxton coming off a career high. Seven offensive rebounds in the big win over Maryland a couple of days ago, including two big ones down the stretch when South Carolina pulled away to win it by seven. And one of those off of a free throw, an off of offensive rebound off of a free throw, now just a, a hustle play. As a head coach, would that drive you crazy? Drive you nuts, <laughs> yes. But that's what Saxton does. Good look at her, one of the captains on this team, along with Boston. And now Duke has gone over six minutes without a point. They got that opening three from Balagoon, and since then they have missed eight straight shots. Well, Don Staley talked about Victoria Saxon and said, you know, we have a lot of glue kids, and, and she's one of them. You know, she's been three years as a captain. She's somebody who plays extremely hard, does all the little things, might not show up a lot on the scoreboard in terms of points, but everything she does impacts the ball game. That steps by DeJesus. Yeah, I like what Don said. She said that they're practice players. She says, we have glue practice players. And she said that's part of the stickiness you need mm -hmm. to put together a championship team. You need that glue to have good stickiness. <laughs> you, you do need that glue to have good stickiness. And it's, it's important. Everyone that steps foot on the court to help you prepare to win championships is important. And when everybody's bringing it, there's a certain competitive level that you get better every day. Camila Cardoso, number 10 in black, has checked in. The transfer from Syracuse. South Carolina hangs on to it. Cardoso was uh, so terrific last year as a freshman at Syracuse. Had a nine-block game against Notre Dame, but kind of feeling her way into this lineup. Me here with the miss. Now DeJesus kicking it out. Gordon missed everything. Boston chases it down. Lexi Gordon's got to find her stroke for Duke. I mean, she started out hot this season. 16 made threes through the first five games and has struggled over the last three. And that is classic Aaliyah Boston. Got her own miss. Duke down by 11, facing right now their biggest deficit of the season. Yeah, in the last three games, Lexi Gordon only 28% from the floor. And that's gone down because she's 0 for 3 tonight. Here's another opportunity for South Carolina. They love to push it. Hey, who was defending? Bree Beal. Air? <laughs> South Carolina has ripped off 16 straight points. Timeout, Duke. Boy, Aaliyah Boston and South Carolina off to another great start. Boston already with seven points and five rebounds in only eight minutes. Her activity level, and, uh, and you see right there her efficiency. It's been well chronicled, her, her fitness journey, right? Like she's in better shape, but, but it's allowed her to be more efficient. It's allowed her to get quicker to the basketball, quicker to offensive rebounds. I, I have noticed on film her passing is so much better. It's on point. It's on target. It has pace. She's got zip on the ball. You know, overall, she's just continuing to take her game to another level. You know, Steph, everything you mentioned, Aaliyah Boston also told me every single thing, but she also said that she mostly feels it on her post-ups. She said she used to get tired from having to work to get in position, and when she would catch the ball, she would have to catch her breath. Now she can work to get in position, stay on balance, and make a move quickly and not be tired at all because of her conditioning level. Well, we saw an example of that you know, one of the early possessions where she worked her pivots through a double team, and she was able to get a shot off. Did some workouts with Tim Duncan during the offseason, and that is a, a foul that will send Rivers, Sanaya Rivers, a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, to the line. Fouled by Balagoon. But it's scary to think as good as Aaliyah Boston has been. When you're a National Player of the Year, or National Freshman of the Year as a freshman, and was in the National Player of the Year, first team All-American, and then you just take your <laughs> game to a whole nother level, yeah. and she's only a junior. And she's only a junior, and, and Dawn Staley talked about, you know, when Aaliyah came to campus, she was just too nice, right? She was too nice, and, and you can see right there in the numbers just the imp overall improvement. Look at this three-quarter oh. course sprint. I mean, running the floor, a rim run by Aaliyah Boston, able to establish low post position because she does her work early. Now being able to play at a high level for longer periods of time in the game. And you're seeing that dog in her. 
You're seeing you're not seeing that that nice Aaliyah Boston that came to campus as a freshman. You're you're seeing a competitiveness and and, and a toughness every day. You know, Steph, we've talked about her toughness and her physical improvements as far as Aaliyah Boston goes, but also her mental game. Even her freshman year, Don Staley told me that Aaliyah Boston is cerebral. She wants to know the why. She wants to know how the offense works, how the defense works. And Don also said that Aaliyah talks like an old man playing pickup basketball. She is always communicating. So it's not just physical, it's mental for Aaliyah Boston as well. Just a strong all-around player. That's a great point. Talks like an old man. I kind of wonder if pick up I like the more specific examples. <laughs> right. We'll have to ask Dawn next time we run into her. Rivers just got one out of three, and the uh, ovation you heard was when Aaliyah Boston was uh, taking a seat on the bench. Camila Cardoso picks up the foul, and it's Cardoso, the Syracuse transfer we just talked about. Dawn says she'd like to see more of a dog in, in Cardoso and not be so darn nice. <laughs> yeah, she said the same thing. She comes in, and she's just really nice. But I'll tell you what, going against Aaliyah Boston every day, she's going to learn what it's going to take. Coming up Tuesday at 6 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. How about the Huddle Bowl preview show? There are 10 ACC teams playing in bowl games. All the guys will break those down. The ACC has spent, sent at least 10 teams to a bowl every year since 2016. Check that out on Tuesday. Bowl season is coming. Christmas is coming. That means bowl season is That's right. right, around, right the around the corner. The corner. <laughs> Trying to get it into Cardozo off her hands. So uh, Boston is out and South Carolina so deep. And that was one of the big questions coming in. Will be continue to be a question. So how do you get all those players in there? How do you keep them happy? And uh, Don Staley has talked about that, and, and you referenced earlier about the competitiveness and needing glue people, everybody buying in, and so far so good. Of course, winning helps, winning does right? Help. <laughs> yeah, winning, winning does help. But Don mentioned, you know, we have a lot of hungry veterans on our team who, who just want to win. And we have a lot of young kids who, who want time, right, who, who, want a t who want time. But you earn that time every day, and you learn what it takes, and you grow in a system, and that's what championship caliber teams do. Last foul was on Rivers, her first. And another turnover. As the first quarter is coming to a close. Swing the ball over to Cook. That's a very chancy pass. Williams with the pick and finally a relatively easy opportunity for Duke. Balagoon has five of their points. Well, Dawn Staley's not going to be happy with that. She talked about the unforced turnovers, the decision making, valuing every possession. It's just the third turnover in this quarter. Duke has five turnovers and only two field goals and another back to back now. Dawn's going to have something to say after the quarter. That one almost went in for Cheyenne Day Wilson, who is a terrific young freshman for Duke. You're looking at not one, but two gold medal winning coaches from the last Summer Olympics. We will elaborate when we come back. South Carolina up 10. Welcome back to Durham, number one South Carolina with a 10 point lead over Duke. And you are looking at Gold medal, gold medal winning coaches who had a connection together. Bottom left, there you go, Don Staley, an assistant on the 2008 team that won the gold medal with Carol Lawson, who uh, I, I had a great gold medal game, did not miss a, a shot from the floor, and they both were gold medal winners this year. Kara with the three-on-three -three team, and we saw a shot there of the late, great Ann Donovan, who was the head yes. coach in uh, Beijing. And Cheryl Reeve, congratulations, taking over for Dawn as the next U.S. national team coach. Absolutely. Cheryl well deserved. Well deserved, no question about it. And Donovan, I was fortunate to play for her with the Indiana Fever um, and, and continue a relationship with her as well. And, man, there are a lot of greats in that picture. Absolutely. All-time Hall of Famers. Outside shot nailed by Destiny Littleton, the former Texas Longhorn, Pam Ward along with Steph White and Andrea Carter joining you. A couple of unbeaten teams, but as you see, Duke not shooting well. Worst first quarter shooting of the season. That's a good start to the second quarter by Balagoon, who hit the three to start the game for them. And I like that horn set. It, it gives a, a little bit of a matchup problem. 
for South Carolina and putting Balagoon in there, somebody who can stretch the floor and knock that shot down. Balagoon is the only Blue Devil who has hit a shot from the floor. And me here, yes, she's playing point, but she can do that as well. And, and that's the matchup nightmare of having a me here at the point guard position. She gives it up, she goes down, she posts up and uses her 6'4 frame and her length and her touch around the rim to score. Yeah, she has been terrific. She's a beast in the weight room too. Someone who looks slight is not. Very strong. Balagoon. To Jesus, that's not a good switch for Duke with Cardoso out there on her. Shot clock dying. Day Wilson with the miss. Cardoso comes up with the rebound. And watch Cardoso work right now. I mean, this is one of the points that Dawn Staley was making to us. You know, she hasn't had to learn how to create position, how to do her work early, how to make a move and a counter move because she's just always shot over the top of defenders. Right there working to get that position. And me here draws contact, gets her own miss. Shot clock resetting to 20 after a miss. Littleton just hit one from out there. And another offensive board, Lily Grisette, who is playing just her second game, coming back from an injury in the SEC tournament, and South Carolina is owning the offensive glass. There's a walk right there, but boy, that just shows you that they're just ridiculous on the offensive boards. I mean, and you can see the offensive rebounds just, just clicking and counting. <laughs> There's Littleton right there coming in the game and making an impact, knocking down the three, and a me here using her size on the interior to score an easy two. They have 10 offensive rebounds, but have only scored two points off of those, so South Carolina not ch taking much advantage of that. Well, Duke's been fortunate. Yeah. Because South Carolina has had a lot of easy opportunities that they have not capitalized on. And there's a foul on Day Wilson. Yeah, it almost looked like when you're like at a gas pump and you see you see the <laughs> dial going. We saw well, the offensive rebound. We're showing our age right there, like the dial at the gas pump. It's all digital. It's digital. Now. That's how I meant the it's digital. A, oh, okay. The digital readout. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, not even close. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in here because <laughs> yes, I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> dial you two are talking okay. about on the gas pump. <laughs> Thank you, Drea. See, we're showing our age. <laughs> oh, there's a pick off. Lexi Gordon takes it. That's six turnovers now for South Carolina. You take a look at this lineup out there, a little mix and match, mostly bench players. Long three by Taylor. Celeste Taylor has yet to score. And I believe that's her second field goal attempt. So Celeste Taylor's got to get some more looks at the rim. And one of the things that Duke does so well is they play that five out and they play with great pace and space and right now their space is being taken away you see them start to all condense around the lane instead of staying outside beyond that three-point line shot clock into single digits Beal lets it fly Cardoso was held by Akinbadi James who picks up the foul for Duke and here she is coming back in after a nice rest Leah Boston who in seven minutes of the first quarter had eight points and six rebounds Karen Prieto, Eric Bruton, and Pualani Spurlock Welsh, our officials this evening in Durham. Littleton, Day Wilson got to her a little bit too late. That's a couple of threes now for Destiny Littleton. Well, we, we saw Duke going over that out of bounds play and shoot around today, and under no circumstances were they ever talking about leaving somebody wide open. And Destiny Littleton just had way too much space. You gotta chase. This is what she does. She shoots it. The miscommunication on the switch. She doesn't need a lot of time, and she knocks that one down. Now they're uh, tending to what we assume is blood on the jersey. It gives Dawn Staley a chance to call her team over. For Duke, Elizabeth Balagoon is three for three. Everybody else, 0 for 13. And we're 13 and a half minutes into this game. Well, and Cheyenne Day Wilson is a, is a player for Duke who can come in and give instant offense, and she's been quieted so far. 
Duke's going to need multiple players to start to catch fire. It's a good look at the uh, young Canadian from uh, Toronto. She had eight threes in a win against Troy. Eight of ten last three games. How about 70% from three? 16 of 23? I mean, she can shoot the ball, and, and she can shoot it from anywhere in the gym. She's instant offense when she comes in the ball game. You know, this is, this is a, a, a great opportunity for this Duke team. A lot of new faces, you know, a lot of players who have played in big games, but not with this same group, right? right? A great opportunity for them to see where they are. And by far the best team they have played this year. Just to go back to Day Wilson as she knocks down the three, it's almost perfect timing because I remember watching her in shoot around today, guys. She had a stretch where she went 16 for 20 from beyond the arc, shot 80%, just catch and shoot. Looked like it was automatic, just like it did on that shot. Yeah, and she was working on some of those actions right there, getting the ball back from a handoff, a little toss back action. I remember watching her when she was playing AAU, and she was just explosive. She could score at will. You know, she's a, she's a player who can definitely fill it up. And you see right here, it's a, a little give and get back. That's tough to guard. And, and we're talking about two bigs right there trying to defend that with Saxon and, and Boston. And she's listed at 5'6", which might be a little generous, but there's a lot of good young Canadian talent, and she certainly fits the bill. Pam, you know everybody who plays the game adds at least an inch, right? At least. It's those wedge sneakers, right? Is that... <laughs> Body James picked up a foul for Duke before that last play. I'd like to know what Drea was listed as. 6-3. <laughs> Drea played for the legendary Pat Summit at the University of Tennessee. Defensive stopper. I did ask our SID guys, I asked him to list me at 5'10". I'm, I'm oh, definitely gosh. not 5'10". I'm 5'8 and a half on a good day, so <laughs> we went with 5'9". Five, 5'9", nine. Five, nine. that we was a little bit more nine. realistic. Yep. <laughs> Didn't want it to seem too outrageous. And me here loses the ball on the way in. Here comes Duke. There's Day Wilson, we just talked about her, kicks it out. Yep. Oh gosh, and another travel. And look, I think that's the confidence right there, or lack of confidence with, with Lexi Gordon not spotting up and just taking that shot. At South Carolina, on top, 25-12. All right, thank you very much. And right now, South Carolina leading 25-12. Dawn Staley looking intense. And you take a look at the numbers, by the way, her seven rebounds for Boston is as many as Duke has as a team. You see Duke not shooting the ball well. And as expected, uh, Steph, uh, they're getting pounded on the boards. Yeah, I, I mean, South Carolina is just relentless on the offensive glass. Uh, 11 offensive rebounds for 12 second chance points. And, you know, fortunate for Duke that it's not more because they've, they've missed a lot of easy ones. And, and if you're Don Staley and, and, and you see that look, I mean, this is a team that, that's really trying to find their way. But Drea mentioned it, no Destiny Henderson, who is, who is the engine for this team, right? She's the one who controls pace. She's the one who gets them into offense. She's the one who gets them into a flow. A lot of weapons really trying to find that rhythm and gel on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, it's kind of scary that they're doing this, the success this season, without a true point guard out there. Raven Johnson only played two games, missing the rest of the season now with a hurt knee. Henderson did warm up today, not ruled out for this game, but we have not seen her play. This would be the third straight game that she would miss. And now Carolina's gone cold. They've only hit one of their last eight, gone over two minutes without a point, but Duke can't hang on to it. Eight turnovers now for the Blue Devils. Well, each time there's a touch in the short corner, that backside skip is, is wide open. And if, if you're South Carolina, if you can put Cook and if you can put Middleton both on that backside, you've got shooters that can knock that down. And Cook hasn't done a lot offensively and threw it away. Taylor got in the path. And that's her third turnover. She had two in a row in the first quarter, and now that's her third turnover. Day Wilson 
drawing contact. Going head to head against Littleton. That is the first on Destiny. Ruled a non shooting foul. And, and, and Pam, right now, Duke is just, their, their cuts aren't sharp. You know, the, 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 their, there's not a lot of, of attention to detail, which is exactly what Kara Lawson preaches. Great screening, hard cuts, setting up your cuts. Right now, they're kind of just going through the motions. And, and sometimes this is what South Carolina does to you with their, with their length, with their athleticism. And Drea was talking about it earlier today. You know, you, you, you get them to begin to feel a little bit robotic. Let's run the play. Let's go through the motions. Shot clock is dying. Littleton, that was... Oh, might, have got, might have gotten a hand on that. And Coach Lawson must be pleased with this defensive effort. It's now been almost three minutes for Duke since they scored. Almost three and a half for South Carolina. Good crowd on hand at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Nice, strict COVID protocols as well. Duke going back to that horn set, trying to get a little bit of action out of that. And, and see right there, another example on that fade screen, there's nothing set. Nobody gets loose. And then you have to try to make something out of nothing as opposed to letting the offense really work for you by executing at a high level. And foul underneath as Saxton was grabbed by Amaya Finkley, who is part of that mass exodus from Syracuse. Finkley, a grad transfer in the very prestigious Fuqua School of Business, and that's you talk about wanting to come to play for Duke. I mean, that's a nice little it's that's a nice little carrot. It sure is. One of the best business schools in the nation. Boston has had to work for every inch of real estate. Now the hard post up. Littleton left open. That's her third three of the game. And again, when you have to give Aaliyah Boston so much attention, everybody has an eye on her. Everybody's collapsing when the ball looks like it's coming in. Someone's going to be open. And for South Carolina, it's just finding that person. And Littleton has given them a lift off the bench. It's, it's almost like you just have to hope that they miss from out there. And there is Celeste Taylor's first bucket. I mean, look, the reality is you got to pick your poison. Right. right. The reality is you got to pick your poison. And, and other players can step up like Littleton has and knock shots down. That's an added bonus for South Carolina. Yeah, Taylor, Mr. First Three hit that one. And Dawn Staley has taken a timeout for the Gamecocks who have only scored 11 points in this quarter. Um, the, the ball movement for, for South Carolina, Dawn Staley talked about it. She doesn't want the ball to stick. She wants to move it with a pass. And here you go, Bree Beal, one of the best at just knowing the right play, the extra pass to Littleton, her third three of the ball game. Yeah, Beal, certainly one of those glue players that Coach Staley talked about, Littleton has nailed three threes this evening, coming in only averaging three points per game. So this is a new season high for her. Had seven in the opening day win against NC State. And she's a player who didn't play in the last ball game against Maryland. Didn't get any minutes, but continues to work, come in and make an impact. Be ready when your number's called. Uh, Ami here showing the athleticism on the alley-oop from Beal. Got foul. Carolina has missed eight of its last ten shots, but a me here heads to the line. Well, South Carolina likes to run that little back screen lob out of the zone, and a me here just elevates over the top. Me here's first trip to the free throw line from Mississauga, Ontario, right outside of Toronto. Really grown her game over the last couple of years and being called on to play the point now has seven points. Oh 
Taylor trying to go by a me here, but Littleton stuck a hand in and forced the turnover. Tenth turnover for the Devils. Boston trying to do the pick and roll. Backside. Wow, oh, three Backside. players. Didn't look. She is bottled up. And South Carolina could not get off a shot. Great defense by Duke. Yeah, really good defense, really good activity level. Leah Boston couldn't see to make that pass in the backside. And just look at the high hands. I mean, it's so important when you come in a trap to have high hands to disrupt vision. And at the, at the end of the possession, Boston found the backside, but it was too late. Gordon and Finkley all over Boston. Boston guarding Day Wilson. Finkley might have gotten away with a step. And look, if, if you're Day Wilson and they're going to continue to switch that on ball screen, you're the one with the advantage with Aaliyah Boston guarding you. That is one of those situations where you might want to just clear it out and look to create. She doesn't necessarily have to score, but draw a secondary defender and find a drop off. Saxton got her own miss. And me here left open. Now Boston gets it down low. Too easy. Yeah, when she gets it there, it's yeah. pretty much over, right? If she gets two feet in that restricted area, it, it is. It's over. Boston's first bucket of this quarter. As the half comes to a close, South Carolina doubling up Duke, the number one team in the country, trying to go to 11-0 on the season, leading it 32-16. to The Blue Devils with seven points in their first quarter and now 16 in the first half, their lowest scoring half this year. Remember, they are also unbeaten like South Carolina as we go down to Drea Carter, who's got Coach Daly. Coach Daly, I know pace and turnovers was a big emphasis tonight. What do you want to clean up on offense in the second half? First, I just want to thank uh, the Maryland Terrapins um, for us slowing the game down, giving people a, a, a defense that they could play and stay in the basketball game. But no, it's us. We're, you know, we're, we're, we just need to move the basketball. We just need to cut. We don't need to make the home run play. Just move the ball against the zone, get it to the big girl, let her facilitate from uh, her having the ball in the low post or the mid post. Well, on the defensive side, you held them to two single digit quarters. How has your defense been effective? I mean, we, we always pack the defense, but uh, we put a lot of pressure on our defense because our offense won't keep up with the pace that we need. But I mean, for not, and this is no excuse, you know, LA is not a point guard, but she's doing a, a heck of a job. She just needs to simplify. If she simplifies, we don't know that we're not really missing our, our starting point guard. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, LA, Leticia Ami here running the point. So it's 32 16, South Carolina in control. Let's go to the studio now. Drew Carter with Muffet McGraw. We are back in Durham, and yes, it's the teddy bear toss. They had that at halftime. They will be collected. That woman, both hands. They will be collected and given out to uh, children's charities here in the Durham area. That's one of the nice uh, traditions they have here. Great tradition is to work with Stephanie White. I'm Pam Ward, Drea Carter with us as well. The number one team in the country leading Duke. 32 to 16. Let's take a look at some of that South Carolina offense. Yeah, I like what South Carolina's done. They start inside and then they're able to knock down shots from the outside as well. And, and this is, you know, the balance of this team and, and the mismatches that they create. Aaliyah Boston is, is just dominant inside. Her ability to stay on balance, to use pivots. Look, she's going around two people, crashing the offensive glass. This is a team that's got 12 offensive rebounds. And then you suck into the paint because of all that interior option. And Destiny Littleton steps up three threes in the first half for South Carolina. South Carolina in the first half only shooting 39% from the floor. See Boston and Littleton doing most of the damage. Duke shooting just 17%. In fact, Elizabeth Balagoon is three for three for them. The rest of the team just three of 18. So 
somebody has got to get it going offensively for Duke, and they need to hang on to the ball. Yeah, I mean, Duke shot at 50% from the field in the second quarter, but they had six turnovers. That's six missed opportunities, no shots. You know, you all are talking about the offense of Duke, and I talked to assistant coach Beth Cunningham coming out of halftime, and she said the same thing. She said she felt like in the first quarter they got good looks, but they didn't hit the shots they needed to get the momentum. So they need to do the same thing and knock down shots and play with confidence. On the defensive end, they have to box out. She said way too many rebounds and easy buckets for South Carolina. Game plan remains the same. Close down the paint and make them shoot outside shots. But she did say, not if Destiny Littleton is on the floor. That was not the game plan. Yeah, I mean, you certainly have to know where Littleton and Cook are at all times from the three-point line. Celeste Taylor hit the shot on the other end for Duke. Easier said than done to try to keep them off the boards especially, right? Because they are a tremendous rebounding team. Zy Cook getting the ball and uh, hitting it, but maybe she misses Destiny Henderson more than others on this yeah, team. I mean, I think so. Destiny Henderson knows how to get Zaya Cook the ball in positions for success. I mean, so much about being a, a spot-up shooter and a catch-and-shoot player is getting the ball in a, in a timely manner, getting the ball in a rhythm, and, and catching it in the shooting pocket. And Destiny Henderson did warm up today, not ruled out, but has not played yet. On December the 21st, another big game. South Carolina's playing everybody this year. They have Stanford coming up. And possibly coming back then, Dawn Staley said she thought she would play before Christmas, and that's their last game before Christmas. So powers of deduction, I think Stanford is what they're looking towards. Cook with the miss, good rebound. By uh, Gordon, again, seven transfers on this team. Lexi Gordon is one of them. Uh, Lexi Gordon has to feel good about that. She has struggled over the last few games from the three-point line, and Duke has to feel great because they need Lexi Gordon's offense. Gordon missed her first three shots of the game before that one went in. Boston double-teamed right away. And that's a growth right there for Aaliyah Boston. She doesn't have an out. She dribbles out, finds, and creates space. Another offensive board by Saxton, who is just a demon down there. Well, this is what Duke does and when they're at their best, is they're knocking down threes, they're taking long shots, and Lexi Gordon, for her to find the bottom of the net, has to be a really good sign. And Andrea mentioned it. I mean, Beth Cunningham talked about the, the shots that they were getting. They were getting looks. Now, they're not getting a lot of in-rhythm cuts because of the physicality, and Muffet McGraw mentioned that at halftime of South Carolina. Saxton goes to the line after being fouled by Williams. Two college basketball games coming for you Saturday afternoon on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. On the men's side, it's Fairleigh Dickinson against number two Virginia. And then Lehigh Syracuse, check it out. In an afternoon of hoops, University of Virginia, Don Staley's alma mater. I remember, I remember watching Don Staley and the Birds twins and Tammy Reese playing those Virginia days. Tanya the final Cardoza. Fours. Yes, Tanya Cardoza. Another one. That'll get her, get you heated up, Lexi. Two in a row for her after struggling mightily the last three and a half games. And you're gonna see a little bounce in her step now. Got it down to a 10 point advantage, but Boston was fouled. Well, the ball movement and the player movement, two defenders go with the cutter and Gordon's able to step up and knock that shot down. Lexi Gordon started her career at UConn, played there for a year and a half, then went to Texas Tech. Sister Myra playing for the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide now. And me here running the point for the third straight game. Yeah, that was an example right there, Pam. You see, she just couldn't, didn't catch it clean, bobbled it. Yep. Taylor in the open court. Oh, Gordon spotting up for three. And Karen Prieto, the official, got in the way. Well, what a heads up play by Celeste Taylor to try to find the hot hand. That's a 12th turnover now for Duke.
but but this is what Don Staley was talking to Dre about. See how the ball's just getting stuck. It's not moving. It's slowed down. They're not playing with that pace. And when she alluded to uh, thanking Maryland, that, that, is, that is it. Maryland slowed South Carolina down and exposed some weaknesses. And here's the play right there. Celeste Taylor looking to find Lexi Gordon in the corner. Is that pass interference? Yeah, it would be if it was football. Yeah, Pareto didn't hit the ball, but she got, she impeded the uh -huh. forward progress of Lexi Gordon, who was unable to catch it. Williams working against Boston. Duke bench wanting a foul, but Instead, they say it's just going over if the ball hit at the top of the backboard. Well, already we're seeing a lot more movement from Duke and a lot harder, crisper cuts on the offensive end. And yeah, they certainly could have called a foul on that possession. Muffet McGraw making the point during halftime in the studio also about Duke not being able to cut cleanly. South Carolina bumping a lot of people when they were trying to get to their spots, just disrupting their offense. But that's what South Carolina does. It is. And, and also, she made a great point about Balagoon. Balagoon hit her first three shots and didn't really get a lot of touches the, the, the rest of the half. And you got to find the hot hand. Yeah, in fact, got zero shots off after hitting her first three. South Carolina, meanwhile, has gone three and a half minutes without scoring. Missing their last four. It's a 6 nothing Duke run. South Carolina has scored just two points in this quarter. A little good child coming in for the first time. One of the fan favorites, an Australian who had a terrific freshman year. Hit 73 threes. The freshman who was from Australia. That's her freshman record. We've seen her playing time diminish. Oh, my. It's pretty, Pam. The, the, she steps into it with confidence, knocks it down, holds the follow through. Got the pose going. Aaliyah Boston has hit both of her three-point attempts this evening. And, and look, we talk about picking your poison, and, and that's what you want Aaliyah Boston doing if you'll do. Now, to Aaliyah Boston's credit, she's worked on it, and she will make you pay for it. Hitting just 31% on the season from distance coming in. Gets her follow and is fouled. But Aaliyah two for two from beyond the arc this evening. Well, fortunately for Duke, Lexi Gordon's heating it up, bringing him back in the ball game. Two long range threes, getting some confidence, closing the gap. Thousands have been affected by southern and midwest tornadoes. If you would like to help, please visit redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover from this almost unthinkable disaster. Folks, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, and Arkansas deeply affected by the storms. And about 250 mile width of that tornado. Un just unthinkable. Yeah, it, the incredible devastation. And Certainly urge people if you can, if you're capable, to donate. And it's holiday season as well as uh, Aaliyah Boston. Hits them both at the free throw line. Aaliyah Boston, by the way, has South Carolina's only block of the night. They're averaging over nine per game as a team, which leads the nation. And there's another turnover, 13th for the Gamecocks. There's not going to be a lot of blocks when you're checking from the three-point line. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but but that's, that's what South Carolina forces you to do. They, they force you to shoot a lot of jump shots, shoot a lot of threes. And that's that work early that we're talking about in the post. And look at the aggressiveness and quickness to the board. And then she reposts, draws three defenders. Yes, yes, good extra. Cook, aggressive to the bucket, a little bit too strong. Rebound belongs to Akinbadi James. There's another block. There's another one. She's doubled her output. Yeah, and, and that's a good drive by Celeste Taylor. You know you're going to get the rotation. You know the shot blockers are coming. Now can you find the next pass?
Jay Wilson has had trouble getting her shot off tonight. Another giveaway. Beal waits for help. So South Carolina right now playing kind of a four out offense with Boston working hard on the post and Eric Bruton has spotted a foul. It's the third foul on Akinbadi James, who exits right now for Duke, along with Celeste Taylor. Nice cut. Beautiful. But Cook headed off at the pass by Finkley. Yeah, Zaya Cook's continued to struggle on the offensive end. A little bit too strong for Balagoon. That's her first miss of the night. And here took steps. And, and, and to, to Drea's point, from talking to Don Staley about the offensive flow, I mean, that's an example right there. The ball gets passed a couple of times, back up, and then it's stuck. You know, three, four, five seconds, and defenses can adjust. Defenses can move and get set when that happens. Your advantage is to keep that thing moving and keep defenses in scramble mode. So to get unstuck, just keep passing the ball? It's good to be stuck when it's a glue thing. Right. So much sticky. <laughs> yes. Sticky is good, sticky. stuck is bad. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, me here. That's a tough shot. <laughs> it went in. How good is she going to be? Oh, she's going to be incredible. I mean, the balance, the body control, and the experience that she's getting right now running point. Showing her versatility. Back shot good by Day Wilson. Beal able to keep it alive, but good child, terrific hustle. Day Wilson gets a little bit of a screen from Finkley and then challenges Aaliyah Boston. How about that? Watch out if she gets going. <laughs> Instant offense. She uses her body to shield the defender. She has just been shooting lights out in the last three games, finding it tough going here, but she went right at Boston, who's about a foot taller than her. Beal got a block by Finkley. Littleton literally put Balagoon on the floor and then got fouled closer to the basket. Well, Cheyenne Day Wilson is instant offense, and look at how she just plays with him right here. See how she uses her body to shield the defender? And the ball in the outstretched left hand, so she can't get a piece. I really enjoyed talking to Coach Kara Lawson about Cheyenne Day Wilson. Coach said she never had a conversation with Cheyenne on what they need from her. She just said, you don't need to tell her to come in and change the game. That's what she automatically does when she gets in. She's looking to attack, looking to score and bring energy. That's right. You know, there are players who just have a knack for offense and have a knack for, for finding scores. And, and she's one of them. She can score in bunches, but she's also a willing and great passer. So she's a playmaker for herself and for others. Leading scorer among all freshmen in the ACC. From Toronto. Littleton one out of two on the line after being fouled by Finkley. Inside, two minutes to go in the third quarter. Taylor from distance. Yeah, the, the player movement, the off-ball screening action, the off-ball cuts. They're now starting to get Duke a little bit of space, a little bit of time. Duke is a team that relies heavily on the three. That's only the third one that they've hit. And they got a little bounce in their step now. Cook could not save it. And now the crowd at Cameron is starting to 
get into it. Duke can cut it to single digits. Attacking closeouts, attacking gaps, forcing rotations. Now you're starting to see Duke offense where they want it to be. Yeah, boy, Jade Williams got a good look at it. Couldn't get it to go, and the freshman Lee Volker just came in and tied it up on the floor. And Don Staley calling for a shot clock violation. Looks like the shot clock reset. sure everything is copacetic with the clock and boy what a difference with the, the fans here as we take a look again did not hit the rim and the shot clock reset so they will correct that but I remember the last time I did a game here when South Carolina came in it, it was colonial life north <laughs> I mean it was so many South Carolina fans and it's so such a different story tonight not just Many more Duke fans and South Carolina fans, they're making a lot of noise. Yeah, they are, and, and look, you know, everybody's excited. The following, the last play is under review for a possible shot clock and a timing mouth, a mistake. Kind of what we figured. <laughs> but that's new, that, the that, officials coming over and telling that we can hear it and so can the people at Cameron. New. The Cameron crazies. But saw, it, it, saw that in the W this summer. Yes, I liked it a lot. Yeah. 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 At least everybody knows what's going on. First hand. Yes. Keep everybody well informed. Yes. Well, Dawn Staley was adamant about it when she was asking the officials to look at it. Oh, yeah. Resets and then more time goes off, so. Oh, it's a great angle. Did not, Did hit, the not hit the rim. And it reset when there were seven seconds left on the shot clock. So they'll take a look at it. Duke coming in 8-0 and on the season. A very impressive win against Iowa a couple of weeks ago. Duke has not played in 10 days, by the way. Their last game was at Penn. Exams, I like, guess. Yes, huh? coinciding yep. with final exams. <laughs> Taking a break. You know, and, and we'd, we'd really be remiss if we just, if we didn't mention how much work you know, these returning players put in last season. Yeah. You know, they played four games last season. Carol Lawson talked about the fact that every player that returned got better, new to the system, their passing was better, got in better shape got a lot of shots up, continued to practice and play scrimmage games against their male practice squad. Yeah, she said every Saturday was game day, tried to keep it as normal as possible as one could during COVID. And you had the same situation at Vanderbilt, right? You guys yes. played, what, eight games? Eight games. And then shut it down. And, and, and she, she made a, a great point. Like, it's, it's tough to stay motivated as a player when you don't have the game as your reward. And, and she really gave a lot of credit to, to this, these players for, for staying locked in and for continuing to get better. Meanwhile, an extended delay here as the uh, officials now are discussing among themselves what they should do and a free timeout for both Coach Staley and Coach Lawson. Shoot, if you're Kara Lawson, you know, you had the momentum. Yeah. <laughs> 
After we review, there is no shot clock violation. Play will resume with a jump ball to South Carolina. Well, they had to go through and likely look at how much time ran off and if it would have been a shot clock violation prior to the jump ball or not. And the review showed that the, sh that the jump ball happened first. Yep. Would have had to be seven seconds. We remind you we have a basketball doubleheader for you tomorrow on the women's side. We will be about a half hour away, and it is at 6 Eastern. Oh, Alyssa good job. Cunane and number two NC State host number 17 Georgia. Looking forward to that at Reynolds. And then Kiana Smith, Haley Van Lith, the rest of the Louisville Cardinal take on Eastern Kentucky right here on the ACC Network in the ESPN app, one app. One tap. Some good teams yes. here. North Carolina unbeaten. Unfortunately, their game today was canceled because their opponent is having some COVID issues. Duke is unbeaten, at least for now. And uh, Georgia and C State. Yeah, that's going to be another great matchup. And Muffet McGraw had mentioned that matchup. And we'll talk about that when we get back from break. Hey, let's take a timeout. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Durham, where uh, Dawn Staley a little bit cranky. Her team has missed seven of its last eight shots. Duke has cut this down to a 10-point ball game. Carol Lawson's team outscoring them by six in this quarter. She has about 40 seconds left to go. South Carolina unbeaten and number one team in the land. Littleton was hot in the first half. Has that one rim off? A me here. Fouled on the follow. That was much better ball movement for South Carolina in that possession. Multiple players touched it, it didn't stick, got a good look. And anytime you've got that zone in rotation, again, opening up offensive rebounds. That was the 17th offensive rebound for South Carolina in this game. Duke only has 18 as a team. You know, we, we've alluded to their length and their size, but they're quick to the ball, and, and every one of them pursues. They don't just wait for an offensive rebound to come to them. They go get it relentless. Rebounding is what percent want to. 100% want to. All right, shot clock's off now for Duke. Dave Wilson with Cardozo in front of her, passes it off. Another rebound for Cardozo. Ty Cook, can she get a shot off in time? Yes, but it does not fall. So Duke outscored South Carolina by five in that quarter. They found their range. Knocking down from the three-point line, Celeste Taylor gets it going for Duke. Back at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke's gotten himself back in the ball game with the three-point shooting. Elizabeth Balagoon hits the first shot of the game, and then in the third quarter, got it going. Day Wilson, Lexi Gordon, which is a good sign for Duke. She's finding her rhythm again. Celeste Taylor. Duke is going to need to continue to get good, high percentage, open looks from three. And they did it with a lot better player movement. In this, in this second half so far. Yeah, it's funny how those two things seem to go hand in hand. You see the big difference between the first and the second half. Lexi Gordon is two of six from distance, came into this game missing 16 of her last 17 from three. But South Carolina, no field goals now in four minutes. And this is really where you miss your point guard. You, you miss Destiny Henderson on the floor to, to get everybody synced, to get everybody in rhythm, to get everybody together, to make the right play. You just see they're just disjointed on the offensive end. And Zaya Cook has missed 11 of her 12 shots tonight. Day Wilson, I like this kid. Uh, too easy. I do too. She's got a bounce in her step. She's got a confidence. Her teammates trust her. She can create. You know, at the end of the day, you got to have ball handlers. you got to have guards who can just make plays. Who is that going to be for your team? And Day Wilson is exceptional. Got it down to a single-digit lead for the first time since there was four minutes left in the first quarter. South Carolina 
led by 16 at the half. And we here hesitated. Cook continuing to shoot and continuing to miss. Taylor beats everybody down the floor. Look at this, it's a seven point game. That's the easiest shot they've had all game long. Really great opportunity in transition off of a long three point shot. Boston had it taken away beautifully by Gordon. And you can see Kara Lawson wanting Duke to push pace. Dave Wilson. This place would have exploded with that one in. She's got such great range. Leah Boston, another double-double now with 13 rebounds and points. Lee Wilson comes over to help. Boston able to spin away from danger. Well, staying on balance, right? Staying mobile being able to use her pivots. Boston's got to be careful about putting that ball on the floor, though, because Duke is coming. Boston with another block. Her third. She had seven of them against Maryland the other day to go along with 16 points and 16 rebounds. Look at South Carolina, that's the first interior pass they, they had that wasn't a, a post entry. But that's again where you miss Destiny Henderson attacking gaps, forcing rotations. Boston cashed it in. Timeout, South Carolina back up 11. South Carolina up 11 on Duke, and in large part because of Aaliyah Boston. She has been dynamic. She's knocking it down from deep. She's staying on balance, showing her array of moves inside. Every time she touches the ball, there are multiple white jerseys around her, and she's able to make the right play on time exactly when South Carolina needs it. Steph, Don Staley had a conversation with Aaliyah Boston after the Buffalo game in the Bahamas, and coach told Aaliyah she was not dominant enough and challenged her to have pride in who she is. And Aaliyah told me that before she steps on the court for practices and games, she thinks of that conversation. We've seen two buckets from her and a steal. That pride is showing up. It sure is, and, and that's important. You know, great players want to be coached. Great players want to be challenged. There's a lot of players who say they want to be coached and challenged <laughs> that don't really want it. But great players do, and Aaliyah Boston is showing that she is a great, dominant player who craves the next level. And she just totally saved that possession. The pass going into Saxton, who had turned her back to set a screen. Boston picked it up, went under the bucket, and scored. Very special player. Her 35th career double-double, fifth in six games, which started with the convincing win over Connecticut. They will play them again on January 27th. South Carolina will. Good child, that's what she does. And that was a really headsy play by De Jesus to be able to keep her dribble alive on the baseline and find the shooter. Good child had 11 against South Carolina in her sophomore year when these two teams played. South Carolina has dominated the series lately. Oh, Cook needed that one. She had a little more lift on that shot. There was a closeout with a hand up, had to get a little bit more lift. She had missed her first seven threes before that one came in, or went in. And missed 13 of her first, or 12 of her first 13 shots overall, pardon me. DeJesus short. Good save by Beal. Didn't even think about shooting. Don Staley and her sparkly sneakers <laughs> giving uh, direction to Ami here. Shot clock at five. Here we go. There's the Zaya Cook we're used to seeing. Well, we've seen this from, from Zaya Cook. She was in foul trouble in the first half against UConn and came out in the second half, made some big shots. She can get hot in a hurry. 
Coming off a big 20-point game against Maryland in which she scored her 1,000th career point. Gets the lead back up to 15. Duke had cut it to eight. Good work by Williams, but Boston's there. Yeah, it, it's tough to, to give Williams the ball going one-on-one -on -one against Boston. When Duke was successful, Williams was out on the perimeter facilitating, bringing Aaliyah Boston away from the rim. They were running a lot of that split and cut action. Timeout, Dawn Staley. Just when Duke starts to close the gap, South Carolina has an answer, and that's a hustle play by Aaliyah Boston. Went and got it, got an easy two, and Zaya Cook is starting to heat up for the Gamecocks. Knocks down the first three of the ball game. And then the little pull-up. Look at the elevation. Quick off her feet, knocks it in. Cook, the junior from Toledo. He's come up large against ranked teams, averaging 18 and a half points per game this year. And again, South Carolina's played a ton of ranked teams. Four games against top 10 teams. They're 4-0. They will play Stanford next. That will be yet another one. And uh, South Carolina, during this run, Duke cut it to single digits. South Carolina's hit their last five shots after a prolonged drought. Cook went by Taylor and took steps. Well, South Carolina is a team that you know is always going to bring it on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, that's the identity of Dawn Staley's program and each one of her teams. You know, she, she says that this could be one of the best, certainly one of the most versatile defensive teams that she's had. And they have the pieces on the offensive end of the floor but continue to be a work in progress. And getting Destiny Henderson back will be a huge key for them. Jay Wilson wanting a foul, none called. She also likes the accountability of this team. So she's had teams in years past when they mess up and they're like, no, it wasn't my fault. But you probably heard that a couple times. <laughs> but with this team, she said that they take accountability before sometimes her staff has a chance to get on them. They're like, yep, yeah. I, I'm sorry, apologize to teammates for messing stuff up. And have an awareness, awareness of their strengths and weaknesses and one another's strengths and weaknesses. That time Day Wilson does indeed draw a foul on Cook, just the first for Zaya. Carol Lawson knew this was a, a tall mountain to climb coming in, 8-0. Iowa, the only other ranked team they have played this year, beat them. Convincingly, surprisingly to me. Big, big win for Duke. Learning moment for Lee Volker, the freshman. Well, this is a Duke team that's still a work in progress as well. I mean, nine new pieces, seven transfers. They, they have experience. They have experience in big games, but learning how to, to grow together and gel together. And we're starting to see their offensive identity. What's their defensive identity? It's a work in progress. Absolutely, just their ninth game together. Next game, they will be at Miami, and then their next league game is at Virginia Tech. Tech's a good team, that'll be a challenge as well. Long shot missed by Boston, another offensive board. Saxton couldn't cash. Dave Wilson. Great hesitation, great change of pace, but when you get two defenders, good steal by. Now that's probably the best yeah. sequence of offensive rebounding for Duke, but they couldn't get a bucket. Well, you had mentioned the teaching moment with Kara Lawson and Volker, and Volker, an opportunity for a big play right there. Now Duke's turn to go cold. They haven't scored in almost four minutes. Still playing defense, Celeste Taylor. Got a hand on it, and eventually came up with the ball. Inside two minutes left to go. Oh my goodness! Cheyenne Day Wilson. Exciting player. 
Wow. What range, especially for someone who's, and now she's being pesky. Look at that matchup with Day Wilson and Ami here. Ami here at 6-4, Day Wilson at 5-6 on a good day. Another takeaway for Duke, but then they give it right back, but still. And, and the fans here appreciating the hustle by these Blue Devils. Yeah, the grittiness on the defensive end, the activity level on the defensive end. You know, you, 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 you can't come away with those empty possessions once you do get the turnovers, but you see the difference in Ami here at the point guard position and the pressure that the guards are able to put on her because she's not used to that. Right. So now Dawn Staley using Littleton and Zaya Cook in the backcourt to handle it. Day Wilson just picked up her second foul. Can I start a campaign that I'd like to see her start for Duke? <laughs> you can start that okay. campaign. Might be a lonely one, but <laughs> well, she's exciting. And again, a true freshman, has some experience playing for Canadian national teams, which always helps, right? No question about it. And, but sometimes as a, as a team, you need that punch off the bench. Yeah, that's who's, true. Who's going to be the punch? Who's going to be the lift? Who's going to elevate? Foul away from the action. Williams hanging on to Boston. Leah Boston, 19 points, 14 rebounds, three blocks. With a minute to go at Cameron. Start to hear from some of the South Carolina fans who made the trip. Cook got a block by Williams. Hey, what a great play by Williams. And Williams known for her defensive expertise. And a shot clock violation. Look, if you're Duke, I mean, you, you got to be really happy with getting yourself back in the ball game right here. You've still got an explosive scorer in Day Wilson on the floor. Yeah, there's some good days ahead for this Duke team. Volker, nice to Williams, who couldn't get it to go. And the 53 points scored by South Carolina tonight, by far their fewest of the season. They scored 65 against Kansas State, 66 in their last game against Maryland. And it's a it's a growing moment, and, and this team showing a lot to withstand what they did in the first quarter. I mean, didn't shoot the ball well at all. Really struggled. Continued to chip away. Continued to to find and stay in the in their flow, in their rhythm. Stick to the game plan. And with just under 26 seconds left to go, Dawn Staley has cleared her bench. Now South Carolina is only shooting 35 percent from the floor. This is a team that. Averages 75 points a game. A subpar offense. Day Wilson, starter. <laughs> South Carolina right now, you just have to be disciplined right there and just contest the shot, but give an opportunity for a four-point play. Wow. So if you're going to start Day Wilson, who are you going to bring off the bench to give you that, that punch? Day Wilson. <laughs> Your point is well taken. But boy, this is an exciting young player. <laughs> 17 points, her career high 28, that game that we mentioned where she hit eight of 10 threes against Troy. You know, you all are talking about Cheyenne Day Wilson being a starter, and I actually don't know, I don't think any of her teammates would be upset about that because one thing that Kara Lawson said is no one is jealous of Cheyenne Day Wilson. They all accept her, love her, really love what she brings to the table. I think that lack of jealousy is what's really going to help this team. Yeah, and they trust her. I mean, they, they trust her. You, know, she, you, you earn that every day with the work in practice. You know, she's a dynamic scorer. We've seen it. Day in and day out, we've seen it on display tonight. Had a little bit of a slow start. 
but she's explosive and she's a type of player that that fans get excited about she's a type of player that teammates like to be around you know and she's another one of those players that she she had originally signed with syracuse and decided to open up her recruitment happened really fast during COVID. no visits I think what makes her really talented, Stephanie, you know, just as I watch her, her handles are really tight. She dribbles the ball hard and gets the ball from the floor into her shot so quickly. The time between the dribble and the shot is so minimal she can get it off. Yeah, that's a great point. Her footwork is really good, too. I mean, you know, when you when she's very fundamental. She's a very fundamental player, has explosiveness, that athleticism and strength. Mm -hmm. High motor, certainly. Didn't didn't get to do till last August, till this August, I should say, very late. After not deciding not to go to Syracuse, uh, staying in the ACC. Both teams tonight will have a season low in points and field goal percentage, but Duke just seven points in the first quarter, nine in the second, and outscoring South Carolina in the second half. Cause for concern for Carolina? You just sit there and wait for Destiny Littleton to well, you get know, out there. Don Staley told us we're a work in progress. And, and, and without Destiny Henderson on the floor, you can see their offensive flow isn't there. Understanding what they want out of the offense, who to get the ball to, when, how, somebody that can break down defenders, somebody that can push pace, somebody who can be that point and set the tone defensively as well. So. You know, I, I think South Carolina has been exposed a little bit. And what that does right now is that gives you January and February to work on those things so that by the time March comes around, you're not exposed anymore. So it's not a bad thing to be exposed, right? Because it gives them something specific to work on. Absolutely. And, and you understand where they are from a limitation standpoint on, a, on the roster right now, not having their lead guard, not having their backup point right. guard who's out for the season in Raven Johnson. And it just shows, too, just how important point guards are. Ooh. Ooh. So Gordon saving the possession with 12.2 seconds left to go. and her staff, Beth Cunningham, Winston Gandy, Tia Jackson, who have been with Katie Meyer down at Miami. To rebuild this program. Jade Williams, that's a charge. South Carolina gonna go to 11-0 on the season. Duke loses for the first time this year. The number 15 team falls to eight and one with this loss. They have Miami next down in Coral Gables. And we look forward to South Carolina Stanford. Stanford, another team that is searching for a point guard. Keanu Williams, such a huge part yes. of that offense graduating and they have had some struggles at the lead guard and we'll see if Destiny Henderson who Dawn Staley said Destiny wants to play right now, but you know, you're a former player. You want to go, right? Yeah. But so sometimes you have to, to keep them from hurting themselves, right? But Destiny Henderson's a player who wants to play, wants to compete, but Dawn Staley and the training staff really want to make sure that she's ready for the long haul. Naya Russell, a sophomore from Baltimore, gets her first points. And a timeout with 5.5 seconds left. So South Carolina already playing this brutal schedule, playing all the other Final Four teams this year, including UConn twice. This is what's coming up for them eminently. On Tuesday on ESPN2, you can watch that game 
against Stanford. That will be in Columbia. And then the SEC starts in earnest. And then the big rematch with UConn, a team that they beat by 16, will be January the 27th. That's a, that's a heck of a schedule. It sure is. And Don Staley's never shied away from, nope. from competing, putting themselves in a position to be resilient enough and know where they stand when it comes tournament time. Great challenge for, for this team and this program. LSU with Kim Mulkey in charge. Mm -hmm, that's right. A whole different vibe in Baton Rouge. Duke going to regroup and head to Miami. And then Charleston Southern and Virginia Tech. So a three-game road trip on the way. We will see them often on the ACC Network all season long. Day Wilson traveled before the shot. Yeah, tell them. <laughs> so Leah Boston, 19 points, 14 rebounds, another double-double for her. Littleton and Ami here also in double figures. Day Wilson leading Duke with 17 three threes off the bench, but the Dukies fall for the first time this year. So South Carolina still number one, still unbeaten, went at 55-46.